Earlier today, Ohio Attorney General David Yost announced that he has ordered his office to research legal ways to stop the government from sending an unlimited number of migrants to Ohio communities. So here to discuss is Jack Posobiec, senior editor of Human Events, and of course, Matthew Peterson, the editor-in-chief of Blaze News. So Jack, let's, let's just start with this. Like, How big of a problem is this in Ohio on the ground right now? Well, it's, it's a massive problem. Again, you're, you're talking about disparities of scale here where a town of only 60,000 people is then given and, and really Im- seen an importation, it's influx from the federal and state government bringing in 20,000 Haitians who, and, and by the way, this wasn't done overnight. This wasn't done under the cover of darkness. Uh, they, these people were brought in by the feds. The state government totally backstopped the entire thing. Governor Mike DeWine and his wife, who has this very interesting, I guess, fascination with Haiti. She's constantly talking about it. They have a school down there um, that they named after their daughter. Um, this, this really deep, intense connection between the DeWines and Haiti for some reason, 1,600 miles away in, in the heartland of Ohio. And you also see for years, they prepared the, the, the way, paving it for the way for the society. Um, so using community organizers and healthcare workers and social workers. And even I, I, was, uh, I was digging up tweets the other day from the school superintendent there in Springfield talking about his efforts to bring more Haitians into the community. This is, and this is two, three years ago. And actually, when I started bringing up the tweets today, mm-hmm. he first locked his Twitter account, mm-hmm. then he deleted that tweet. I believe as of right now, he's deleted his entire Twitter account, all because we were highlighting the work that he's done over the past two years to prepare the the citizens and the town folk. Of, and this is just one town, by the way. This is just one example of a town that has been completely terraformed with migrants via the federal government. And oh, by the way, guess who paid for it? All of us did with through federal tax dollars. Yeah, people need to realize this is happening throughout the country. Yes. And this is just one example that has been turned up. But let's go into that example. I mean, there's there's two two reasons for this possibly that we've 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 chatted about. One is this is about punishing Trump supporters. This is targeting an area of the country where they know people support Donald Trump, and it's a sort of punishment for them. Um, the other, the other, and these are not mutually exclusive, which is what we've both seen over the years, is that whenever this happens in a specific location, yeah, the school, the, the libs will come on, the, the superintendent, they want them all to come, and it's all going to be great. But there's usually a corporate interest in the back of it, and these people are working as indentured servants somewhere uh, you know, in that community. So what we've discovered in digging into this is there is a Japanese auto parts uh, manufacturer, there's a microchip hub, and there's a few processing plants, a few things like this. And essentially what's going on is they've created, and, and you might say, well, that's great. If all of these industries are coming in, well, why don't the people of Springfield just go work there? You, you have the 60,000, what do you need the migrants for? Here's how it works. They, the migrant refugee resettlement organizations create what's called something along the lines of a, a hidden job market. And the hidden job market means that when those, and, and, and the companies all know this is going on as well because they love it. Because when the companies hire migrants, you get money, subsidies from the federal government in form of tax breaks or even in the form of sometimes direct payments from the federal government because, oh, you help the refugees. That's why you see them hanging up refugees welcome. That's why you see all the, there's a huge map of Haiti up in one of these things where they can talk about where everybody's from and Mike DeWine is so excited about it. Again, it's all backstopped by federal money and they create the hidden job market because they'll go to those recruiters. So you're talking about like, you know, how come I didn't see this on, you know, indeed.com or, you know, one of those um, just job placement sites and because they won't put it there, they'll go directly to the refugee resettlement organizations. In many cases that you'll see places like Catholic charities, Lutheran charities will do this as well. And they'll say, oh, we have these jobs coming up. So they'll work with their private recruiters to make sure that it's migrants who get those jobs. So why? The federal dollars can flow in behind. We know Kamala Harris is, of course, going to be a fan of this. And she previously has bragged about the program that has brought billions uh, of Haitians to the U.S. Let's take a listen. That is why also, starting with our administration, we gave TPS, Temporary Protected Status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. 
Jack, they just need support. They need protection. Right. So 100,000 Haitians. And, and keep in mind, this is all predicated on the assassination of the Haitian president back in 2021, where he got knocked off by a couple of U.S.-backed Colombian mercenaries. And the United States is totally behind the government of Colombia. He gets knocked off by the Colombian mercenaries. Again, they killed the president of Haiti. Mm-hmm. So Haiti spirals into chaos. You get gang warfare. You get cannibal gang warfare with this guy barbecue, uh, prisons that are being totally let out. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, there's this terrible crisis whatever are we to do? Well, we'll welcome them up here. We'll bring them in here absolutely en masse. So when I say 20,000, that's just in the town of Springfield, Ohio. She's talking about it, extending these protections out to 100,000 for other Haitians, and they want to continue it because it's a multifaceted operation. So the, the, the business owners who donate to Republicans get the cheap labor. This is the Mike DeWine types. Then, of course, the Democrats get the voters. Once they've, Eventually, they'll, we know they're all going to have voting status because the SAVE Act isn't on the books yet. So they're going to be voting at some point. And, what, and where are they being sent? Where are they being sent? They're being sent not only to Trump-supporting counties, but states that could nominally swing for the Democrats if they were uh, repopulated with more and more migrants who we know predominantly vote blue. So what would they? What would you do then? Well, you'd send them to the Trumpy estates in order to try to reshape the election field to better your presidential chances. Let's talk about uh, the explosion of uh, news on this, or should I say memes, uh, in the last 24 hours. I don't know what you're talking um, about. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have, I don't make memes. <laughs> That's, those that's are, true. That, I heard those could be mm. misinformation. That's I true. Would never... Misinformation and disinformation was yeah, the top point at Davos this so, year. Yeah, Sometimes so... I share them to warn people, um, right? And you do this too. You warn well, people. What I'll do, yes, if I encounter one that is, that is just so horrific, I'll post <laughs> it so that other people know that it's out there so they'll look out for yeah. it so they'll know not to post so, it themselves so so what has happened is an explosion of memes uh with donald trump being the rescuer of the pets of springfield because there are reports and there are people in the town talking about these migrants Wait a um, Wait a i just thought about something yeah the town's called springfield <laughs> where are the simpsons memes it, yeah. yeah we gotta do we gotta get the oh, yeah. simpsons involved yes. in this we need yes. bart and lisa Fighting. Saving yes. the cat. So, and they have a cat, right? And the dog is the same as a little helper. Oh, yeah. Oh. Snowball the cat. Yeah, I mean, there's... Snowball 2. Snowball 2. I'm going to get on Grok right. Anyway, um, <laughs> we, we, have to, we have to talk about this because you see a lot of people talking about what the residents of the town are talking yeah. about, which is that uh, pets and other animals, right, have been uh, killed. Um, maybe a cat eaten even by someone, right? Well, and it a, wasn't. And by the way, the media, Ohio, the media is saying, other place. "Oh, well, the police say we don't have records. Police have yeah. any records?" So, so Jack Posobiec and Matt so, Peterson, JD Vance made it all up and said, "No, no, 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 so, we didn't start this. Yeah. The townspeople went and told you this what was go- going on." Yeah, that's what I and that's what I want to ask you about because what I see happening here is uh, a classic situation in which they're trying to get out in front of something that they know is very dangerous yep. to them. Yep. And we were just talking about this. You were just talking about this before we went on air. I mean, talk about that to our audience because it's clearly happening yeah, so, right now. I mean, so when, just lay when, out how this is well, going to go and, down. And, and, and Jill just mentioned, of course, that when when they declare something misinformation, what you will get then is the social media fact check. And the purpose of a social media fact check, whether it's from Pointer or factcheck.org or Lead Stories with Alan Duke, one of the who loves work taking his Chinese communist money from TikTok, that what they will do then is every time you make one of those videos, if the fact check is out there, every time you post one of those videos, you clip one of them, you want to put on your social media, oh, boom, it gets hit with a fact check. So Instagram takes it down, TikTok, takes it down Twitter now Twitter through the community notes does typically still allow things to spread but Facebook and all the others they will what it what it does it doesn't get it deleted necessarily but it will stop the spread of these images and it will stop the spread of the video so you can have a video of a local and you by the way we saw this with East Palestine we saw this of course throughout uh, COVID in 2020, that someone could be telling you that this happened. Uh, this happened to my family. We went to the doctors and my kid came back and he was like this, or we went and this is how the, you know, COVID affected me, or this is how something else affected me in 2020. Um, and so you, East Palestine, you know, we're, we're getting these, these smells from the, from the river. We're getting these smells from the train derailment that was then exploded. Uh, again, which by the way, also Mike DeWine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it was declared misinformation. The EPA came in, the FDA came in, the NTSB came in. But what was great though, was people held the line in East Palestine. And that's what we need to do again here. 
and say, no, you, these people are telling you the truth. They know what's going on. And then in East Palestine, it actually turned into a meme because they kept saying the water is safe. You remember this? They kept saying the water is safe. And then so when the EPA officials would come in, they, they would scoop up some water from the river and walk up to them and say, have a drink then. <laughs> so go ahead and have a drink. Here you go. Why don't you try it? And the fact that they wouldn't is how you know the government's lying to you. But of course, right, you're also seeing the weaponization of misinformation to create censorship of stories that would be damaging politically to the face of the regime. Now, Jack, real quick, because I know you have to go. I was able to go see you speak in Fort Worth so over much, the weekend. The and one of the things that has stuck with me uh, from listening to you was your, your push. It's eight weeks Yes. Until the election. There is so much to be done. This is this is the biggest eight weeks, basically, of our lives. So I would love just to hear you real quick before you before you have to go, just Look, kind of enlighten our audience on yeah, so there's, the there's importance a, of this time. There's, there's a lot of things going on right now, and there's always going to be different stories happening. There's going to be different arguments online, and, oh, are we going to talk about some historical debate about, oh, I have this thing, and I have, I'm in this camp, and I'm in that camp, or somebody post, makes a post, and oh, you have to do your hot takes. And I get it that sort of people live in the hot take economy now, mm -hmm. and so you you, you know, are you going, are your stocks going up, your stocks going down, whatever. It, it Fine. Like, I get all that. But we have an election in eight weeks and an election that could determine the actual trajectory of Western civilization. And if you are not on the line traveling around the country or, to, or, or in, 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 in my capacity, I have the, I'm very blessed. I have the ability to travel. And so I'm going, I'm coming to Texas. I'm going up to Pennsylvania tomorrow for the debate, but I'm going to be going out there making sure I register voters, making sure I get people to do early balloting. We're going to be doing a series of events. We're even doing uh, trainings. We're doing all sorts of stuff as much as possible in order to, I'm, I'm doing one of them on the phone, like on the way to the airport today, just because we, you need to get active. And that's all I'm saying. You need to get active, whether it's locally, whether it's uh, in a swing state that's nearby. And by the way, so many of the organizations out there, um, Chase the Vote, PHAs, or Turning Point Action, or Scott Pressler, Early Vote Action, they have the ability for whatever state you're in, you can you can call in or text in to swing states and actually see if people have have, have uh, put in their ballots yet and do done all of this. And so, yeah, we can have these academic debates. I love them. Like I'm, I'm very guilty of all of this, but unless you're actually turning it into something that helps in the election, then you're kind of just wasting time with distractions because again, we have eight weeks and then after that it's done. And guess what? If they steal an election, you're, you're never going to like unsteal an election. It's done. It's done November 5th and everything else afterwards is just, I'm sorry, it's just complaining. So I don't want to complain. I want to leave everything on the field right now. And there's honor in that. And there, and it, and it does honor to God. It does honor to God to fight with all that you have in the last eight weeks. That's right. I mean, by the way, we're even putting out another book. <laughs> I bet my publisher would be upset if I didn't mention it. We're even putting out another book because the media, by the way, two inexplicable things happened where just a couple of weeks ago, the president of the United States, or Donald Trump, former president of the United States, uh, was shot, by the way, in the head. Mm -hmm. And then nine days after that, the current president of the United States dropped out of the race. And inexplicably, the media just stopped talking about both of these events. They're just, just like, oh, yeah, no, no, just some stuff that happened. But now Kamala. Yeah, we really care about Kamala. So we're doing the new book about all of this and the intrinsic connected nature of what happened during those nine days in July. And if you understand the connection between the gunshot not hitting, not, you know, essentially uh, hitting purchase with Donald Trump and Joe Biden dropping out or being forced out in a palace coup is what actually happened. To unpack those layers is to actually understand the true nature of the system under which we live.